Okay, now let's go over how to export data out to other software and other machines so that you can integrate Almoxie seamlessly with all kinds of other devices and solutions. So first of all, let's look at what are called exporters. So if you go up here to your settings tab and come down to exporters, basically what an exporter is, is a way to configure a set of data to go out how you want it. There's some help information right here. Make sure to read all of that. And then you can add as many exporters as you need. So let's start with one. Just give it a name, something that you'll be able to recognize throughout the system. Pick the data format. Most of the time you're going to use CSV. CSV means comma delimited. It basically just means there's a comma in between each piece of data and it has become a very standardized way to send data in and out of other software. You can however though choose XML or plain text. So the file extension can actually be customized and named whatever you want. So when we save the file, it's going to have a name and then a dot something. The dot something tells the computer what program to use to open it up, or more accurately, what type of file it is. And then most computers will pretty much will figure out which program to use to open it up. Now, especially in the machinery world, a lot of the machine manufacturers have decided to come up with their own type of CSV. So it might be a dot ABC or something else, but really all it is is a CSV. However, if you need it to be custom, go ahead and change it here. Okay, let's go over the header and the footer. There are several layers of headers and footers throughout exporters. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to throw in some stuff here so that you can see what's going on. So I'm going to use some variables from the sideline. So I click company ID, comma, throw in some text, comma, and just something else to keep it interesting. On the footer, I'm going to do the same. Just a random date, comma, and I'm going to uncheck this. We're going to go over each of these three settings in a second. I'm going to activate it and save it. Okay, so now that we've got this test exporter built, let's go ahead and see how this all comes together at the different levels. So in order to demonstrate, I've already built some at the exporter level. Now let's go in and build some at the product level. So we're going to just use this product for an example. So let's go find that product. And by the way, I strongly recommend using multiple tabs just like I've done so that you can go back and see different parts of the things you're working on. You can change, save, verify, change, save, verify, that kind of thing. Okay, so here's the product. Now if I scroll down, we've already gone over most of this stuff. If I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see exporter, header, and footer. Okay, so let's say at the product level, I want to add something to my exporter. Select the one we're dealing with and hit add exporter. Now you can do whatever you need here. You can use variables if you'd like, but just to make this simple to understand, I'm going to just type something that's easily recognizable. Okay, and we'll save. Okay, so now let's go into the parts for this product and configure this so that we get something on every single line item. So typical for this, we would want something like quantity, width, and height. So we're going to use this part. So we're going to go this part quantity, comma, this part width, comma, this part length, comma, and then we'll just write out left style. And we got to choose the exporter. Test. Set the precision. We already went over all of this stuff. And this is where you're building your parts. And don't worry too much about what I'm doing right now. I just want to make sure that this actually fires. Okay, so let's go do the same thing to our right style. So just a little trick here. You can just go ahead and copy all of this because it's exactly the same formula and copy it to your right style. And we'll just change this to right, select. Okay, so we've created a scenario where everything will show up on that exporter. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's go to an order with this product on it that we've configured. Let's save it. Go to the frame list we put that exporter on. There's our test exporter. Let's click it. It downloaded and we opened it in Excel and here's what we got. Okay, so you see the three levels of headers and footers that we dealt with. We have this. This was the export header. This was the export footer. Then we had the product level header, product level footer for each product, header, footer, header, footer. And then we had the exporter at the product line item for every single one of these. So let's play around with this a little bit to get even more clarity as to how these work. So let's say that in here we want labels for these because we don't know what 2.5 is. So what we do is we'd come, so we'd come back to our product 
the part level and we can just insert qty comma width comma and i'm going to copy this down to all of these i'm going to do it in fast forward so you don't have to wait and go ahead and save it and let's see what that did so let's go to our order and resave open up the frame list get a new exporter and you see what we've added so let's make these make more sense let's go to our product go to attributes down to the bottom let's say we just wanted to get rid of these because we don't really need them in this case save and let's go look at what that did Clean it up nicely. And just for a few more examples of things, let's go back to our exporter. And let's just say that this footer doesn't make sense. We don't need it. And let's make this one make more sense. So let's give this an order number, order name, and just for fun, an order total and save that. Go back to our order, resave it, and let's look at what that did. So by looking at these, we can see that we created a lot of different types of exporters. You know, we started out kind of at this level, and you can see that the different, the three different levels globally at the export level, and then these at the product level, and then these at the actual line item level. So using whatever level you'd want, and using your own formulas and variables, you can customize exactly what the system sends out so that it matches the data that your software or machines need, and in the format that it needs it. Okay, so let's see what happens when we start playing around with some of these settings here that we said we'd come back to. Okay, so let's click the one line per part and go ahead and save it. Come over to our order. We're gonna resave the order. And let's look at what that, so you notice what happened here is it took the stance of every single part gets a line now. So all our quantities all the way through are just one and it generated a line for each one. Let's go back to our exporter. And just like the one line per part, the one line per item is gonna do the same thing, except it's going to do it at the line item level. So this is gonna look at the total amount ordered, for example, quantity two, and this one is going to look at the part quantity. So you could have on this level, quantity two, so they wanted two doors, and each one of those doors had two styles. So you needed four styles. If you check this, you'll get four lines, each with a quantity of one. If you check just this, you'd get two lines, because they ordered two doors. You can play with this a little bit, and it'll make sense as you use it in your own context. We're not gonna talk too much about this one right now, but all Moxie allows you to batch orders. So for example, you could batch a whole day's worth of production into one exporter, one file that would go out to the saw. And if in that batch you wanted to generate headers and footers between every single order, you would click this. And if you did not, you would uncheck it. The active, of course, turns this exporter on and off. And showing customers allows you to grant this exporter to them. So they could in theory, if you gave it to them, see a frame list and the exporter. Turning this check on and off will show or hide that for customers. Okay, and I'm only gonna touch on this a little bit right now because some of these methods are a little bit advanced and they're gonna require their own training videos to get done. But let's talk a little bit about how to get the data out of the export. So we already know that the data is sitting right here and that by clicking on it, it'll download it to a folder on our desktop. So make sure your browser, whichever one you're using, I'm using Chrome right now, is set up to download its files to the right folder. Just go to your browser settings to configure that. So that's the the most manual way to do this. Just click and it downloads. Quickly mentioning a couple others. The system has triggers and these triggers, if we open one up, can actually be configured to attach exporters. So what this will do when we select this is when the order is changed to ordered, send an email with an attachment of the data we just created. And you'll have to watch the trigger class for more about triggers. Suffice it to know here that you can attach exporters inside of triggers. Also, using our AP API and a third party tool called Zapier, you can connect exporters to a whole array of web based tools. And again, this is a class for another time, but just know that there are a few ways to get data from an exporter to where it needs to be. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and create an exporter, even if it's just a simple one you're going to delete later. Configure the export at the exporter level and at the product level to put something out that you can then download and send to a machine or some software.